Yeah. And what's really interesting about it, and this is why that first level, you can go two slides in. This is why that first level is so wildly important. You can't do this well unless you have those initial readiness factors. Like until you've got a Nicole, if you don't have like a Nicole on your team, either get her on your team or turn somebody into Nicole, send them to her courses, because you really do have to have an understanding of your workflow and you've got to have your prompts really well engineered. If those parts aren't working, then automating it is just going to scale up your, your crappy outputs. So, so it is really critically important that everyone starts here. Um, yeah, don't garbage go to this in, next level until you're ready. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. And so when I start thinking about the people element, there are some things I want to get everybody who runs a company thinking about. So one, what opportunities should you be looking for? Like, where should you be using AI? Don't go create a problem, but there are some things that these tools are particularly good at. One is chatbots, whether that's for your customer service or even internal things. And you can customize those with your own data. Imagine putting your entire database of contract files into a chatbot and being able to interact with it, ask it questions or get, you know, recent teased terms and conditions that you can use in your other contracts. The other one is data retrieval because these AIs work very well with unstructured data. We've, we've seen a lot of clients who have, um, you know, a really old database where there's not a lot of consistency in how the data is stored and they want a way to be able to query and use that information. And AI tools are very good at kind of cutting through some of that unstructured data. The other two use cases we've seen is, is first decision-making tools. So if you've got a bunch of information on your sales data and or your team or your staff or your HR reports on everybody and you're trying to make decisions, these tools can work as, as kind of consultings for consultants for you that use some of your internal data and information to help, to help drive decisions for your business. And then finally, like we've all talked about here, content generation, whether you're doing marketing, sales, customer services, really, really any form of content generation these tools tend to work really well. So as the business leader, I would be spending my time thinking a lot about, are these use cases that are relevant for my business where we could either do this better, faster, with less human intervention, lower our costs, et cetera. And then the question becomes, well, you've got a team of people. What do we use everybody for? So I think the first thing I would say is your high skill workers, they should start by using these tools and they should always be using these tools because it's going to be important for understanding their limitations and some of the trends and capabilities, but your high skill workers should really be focused on designing those readiness factors. The things that Nicole can coach anybody on your team through, make sure you've got well-optimized prompts, make sure you know the sources of information you need to use, define your workflow, make sure you understand what you're trying to do and what the steps are to do it. Gatekeep AI outputs. Let's keep them from running out of control or putting crappy stuff on, on our website and make sure we're tying all of this behavior into business goals and strategies. So with a company like Saltbox, when we think about our US-based expensive talent, this is what we want them focused on. We want them kind of managing the system, making sure it makes sense, understanding the limitations and designing that process end to end. And then you've got to ask, okay, well, if you've got some overseas labor or some lower skilled workers in your company, where do they fit in? And I think what one analogy I would, I would use is those low skilled workers are often a good starting point before you automate things. Because if you've got high skilled workers internally, like Nicole mentioned, where she's creating prompts and defining workflows, then her virtual assistant is much more capable of plugging those into certain tools, moving data between email and chat GPT and going and pushing it into an email marketing system. And so that's a great place for your lower skilled workers and employees to fit in. Over time, when you start doing that over and over and over, the, the robots are really excellent at replacing this kind of slice of automation over time. And, and you know, job loss is one of the big concerns. Uh, you know, I think one of the things is high skill workers need to start elevating the work that they do. And low skill workers are definitely at risk. Uh, and we need as a society to attend to that by training them or giving, you know, a universal basic wage to allow people who maybe are lower skilled to, to make a living. Because just like robots started replacing folks in factories, uh, you know, AI is going to start replacing some low skill uh, and more repetitive automation work. Yeah. And what we've done at Saltbox is we've taken our low skilled workers and we're trying to train them into high skilled workers. <laughs> and, we're, and we're trying to replace some of the stuff off their plate with automation so that they can be the ones helping design the process and helping hit some of those readiness factors and business goals. And, and in our company, what that's led to is we haven't actually had to fire anybody. If anything, we've just upskilled our entire workflow force and made everyone a lot more efficient.
I yeah. think that's the right way to do it. A whole can. new layer of services, which is that middle layer that didn't exist, you know, at least not with the kind of demand you're now seeing, uh, even you know, six months ago.